Dear student, I am Dr. Prakash Mungli, Professor of Biochemistry. So, in this video, I will be going over details on glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme deficiency. As you know, a glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme is the most regulated enzyme in pentose phosphate pathway reaction that we have seen in the previous lecture. So, deficiency of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is the most common cause for hemolytic anemia leading to severe hemolysis. So, let us get into the details of this particular disease. Now, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency simply uh, sometimes uh, said as G6PD deficiency. It is the most common enzyme deficiency in humans leading to hemolytic anemia. So, the hemolytic anemia, the most common cause for hemolytic anemia is uh, especially the enzyme induced, enzyme deficiency induced hemolytic anemia. The most common cause is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme deficiency and it is an X-linked recessive disorder that means males are the ones that are symptomatic and females act as carriers here. And G6PD deficiency is commonly seen in uh, people who are descendants of Africa, Middle Eastern and South Asian descent. So, that means this particular disorder is uh, by population genetics, it is kind of more frequent in this particular geographical area that is Africa, Middle East and South Asia. So, as I already told you, affected are males and females act as a carrier because females have two X chromosomes. So, if one X chromosome is defective, other X chromosome will take care of the amount of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase that need to be synthesized. Usually, they act as carrier whereas males have got only one X chromosome and if that X chromosome is defective, they, they will suffer from severe deficiency of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. Now, Note that it is a G6PD deficiency, it is not complete absence of G6PD. That means some amount of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme is still present in these patients and that will maintain or that will conduct an oxidative phase of pentose phosphate pathway and will make necessary NADPH plus to maintain the basal metabolic needs of the cell. Now, whenever there is an increased demand for NADPH plus because of uh, so many triggering events, at that time these patients become uh, symptomatic. So, that means glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme deficiency patients, they are usually asymptomatic, but whenever there is a triggering event which will lead to increased generation of reactive oxygen species, at that time there will be increased demand for NADPH plus and if that demand is not met and that will lead to severe hemolysis in them and that makes them being symptomatic. So, what are the triggering events that will lead to increased generation of reactive oxygen species and thereby makes glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficient patients symptomatic because of severe hemolysis and that is if a person with G6PD deficiency suffer from any infection that will trigger the condition or if they are taking anti-malarial drugs like primaquin, pamaquin, so this kind of anti-malarial drugs may also lead to triggering of the disease making a patient being symptomatic. Sulfonamides like sulfamethoxazole, so that will also lead to triggering of the disease leading to making a patient being symptomatic. Certain analgesics like aspirin intake or thiazosulfone, methylene blue chemical, naphthalene chemical or non-sulfa antibiotics like nalidixic acid, nitroferentoin, isoniazid, dapsone, ferazolidone, all these drugs whenever a person takes these drugs for whatever the reason, if that person is already glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme deficient at that time person becomes symptomatic ok you got to remember all these triggering events and that will be given in the exam especially in the case time that is how the case time starts. So, make sure you know that males are the ones which are affected here because glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency it is an X-linked recessive condition 
and also you need to look at the geographical area that is african middle eastern and uh, south asian and also you got to look for what is the triggering event that has led to severe hemolysis in these patients okay now rbcs in g6pd deficient uh, patients are more susceptible for oxidative damage because patients with glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency already they have less than normal amount of nadph plus h plus so if they have less nadph h plus that means they will have relatively less gsh that is a reduced glutathione is less if there is a less reduced glutathione that means they will have higher amounts of hydrogen peroxide and this higher amount of hydrogen peroxide in turn it will lead to higher hydroxyl radical formation which is a reactive oxygen species and what this reactive oxygen species does this reactive oxygen species it leads to rbc lysis because it's going to damage the red blood cell membrane thereby red blood cell membrane will break open and hemoglobin will come out and leading to loss of hemoglobin that leads to anemia so it in fact it leads to severe hemolytic anemia and the hemolysis begins 24 to 72 hours after exposure to oxidative stress or any triggering event that we have seen in the previous slide all right so the patients with uh, glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency they will manifest with uh, weakness uh, because of lack of hemoglobin leading to decreased oxygen carrying capacity tachycardia so tachycardia is because of uh, again decrease in hemoglobin content lack of oxygen so there is uh, increased heart rate that will be going on and uh, because of the breakdown of hemoglobin heme is broken down into bilirubin so excess bilirubin will lead to jaundice so patient with presence with jaundice and presence of hemoglobin in the urine so leading to hematuria all these signs a uh, patient will show upon exposure to triggering event or triggering agent that leads to elevated levels of hydroxyl radical which is coming from hydrogen peroxide and also there is something called as favism so favism is hemolytic response to consumption of broad beans or fava beans and that is seen in patients with glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency so already if the patient is having glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency and if the patient consumes fava beans which will release more and more oxygen radicals and that will lead to hemolytic uh, crisis and also note that glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficient patients they uh, are protected from severe malaria and that's because a uh, malaria it will thrive in red blood cell so rbcs that's where malarial parasite will make their progeny they it will divide in the red blood cell and glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficient patients since they have less gsh level their rbc membranes will be undergoing lipid peroxidation because hydroxyl radical will break the uh, which will lead to lipid peroxidation in the red blood cell and there will be constant rbc lysis although not at a severe rate but there will be death of rbcs so rbc lifespan in glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficient patient instead of normal 120 days it will be reduced almost to 20 days so that means there will be rapid lysis of red blood cell in these patients and that will make a uh, unfavorable environment for malarial parasite to thrive in the red blood cell that's why severity of malaria it will decrease in glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficient patient and this kind of less severe malaria that is seen in g6pd deficient patient it's kind of advantage for these patients having g6pd deficiency which are protected against severe malaria that concept we call it as heterozygote advantage so just have an idea about it so the figure here it is it is showing you the overview of g6pd deficiency and the signs and symptoms that are seen in g6pd deficiency how exactly hemolysis is going on so let's start from glucose here glucose entering into the cell converted to glucose 6 phosphate remember we are looking at uh, red blood cell here this is rbc figure all the entire reactions show, shown in the red blood cell now the glucose 6 phosphate is diverted into pyruvate formation glycolysis and pyruvate to lactate atp generation that's on one side some of the glucose 6 phosphate is diverted into pentose phosphate pathway that is done by glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme and making nadph plus h plus 
and this NADPH plus it is used by glutathione reductase enzyme and converting GSSG back into GSH and that's a reduced glutathione and this reduced glutathione which is used by glutathione peroxidase enzyme and it is going to convert hydrogen peroxide into water molecule thereby it will prevent free radical generation so use of GSH so this content amount of GSH should be maintained at normal concentration so that hydrogen peroxide can be controlled it can be neutralized to water molecule and that needs sufficient NADPH and that needs activity of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme so patients with the G6PD deficiency as it is shown here which I already explained to you earlier if there is a G6PD deficiency that will lead to decrease in NADPH plus H plus and that will in turn lead to decrease in GSH when the GSH is decreased that means the activity of glutathione peroxidase will also decrease and that will lead to increase in hydrogen peroxide note that hydrogen peroxide can be increased whenever there is a oxidative stress there so increase in hydrogen peroxide means increase in hydroxyl radical and that hydroxyl radical lead to increase in lipid peroxidation of red blood cell membrane so red blood cell break open and leading to hemolysis hemoglobin is lost leading to severe hemolytic anemia this is the mechanism of hemolysis in G6PD deficient patients. Now G6PD deficiency can be divided into four types that is a G6PD A plus variant and G6PD A plus variant means these patients will they have a relatively sufficient glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme and usually they are they don't show any signs of severe hemolysis. Now G6PD A minus variants are the deficient Deficiency of G6PD is significant here and these patient, patients will show hemolysis upon any triggering event that we have seen. Now G6PD Mediterranean variant. G6PD Mediterranean variant is it's a G6PD A minus. G6PD A minus that is seen in Mediterranean region and usually it is severe form. Whereas G6PD A minus variant is seen in all like African, Middle Eastern, South Asian. Whereas G6PD A minus Mediterranean is specifically seen in Mediterranean people. And also it is more severe than other uh, variant that is G6PD A, A minus variant which is seen in South Asian, African and Middle Eastern uh, region. So now Fava bean hemolysis. Now the Fava bean hemolysis is it is the G6PD A minus Mediterranean variant these people showing high sensitivity for the consumption of fava beans leading to uh, severe hemolysis followed by consumption of fava beans. Favism basically which is seen in G6PD A minus Mediterranean is simply put it as fava bean hemolysis. Now coming to diagnosis of G6PD deficiency. Now, diagnosis of G6PD deficiency, uh, we'll have to look at the ethnic group, like which type of people are showing hemolytic crisis upon triggering event. So, like African, Middle Eastern, South Asian uh, people showing hemolytic crisis or hemolytic response upon consumption of fava beans or uh, upon exposure to infection or upon exposure to certain drugs and chemicals where hemolysis will be going on. So that type of classic history will have to look into uh, whenever we deal with hemolytic crisis or hemolysis followed by certain infection and triggering events. And then complete blood count and reticulocyte count it helps in the diagnosis process. Liver enzymes, fractionated bilirubin levels are generally done, lactate dehydrogenase to assess severity of hemolysis is done haptoglobin haptoglobin is a it will bind with hemoglobin molecule so haptoglobin hemoglobin complex so uh, higher levels of haptoglobin means less hemoglobin being uh, available in the blood or less uh, hemolysis and less haptoglobin means there is a severe hemolysis going on and also direct anti-globin test which is called as combs test it will differentiate uh, immune mediated hemolysis than non immune mediated hemolysis so in order to differentiate that so combs test is done now one of the important feature of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency that we must look at is hinge bodies hinge bodies can can be seen in red blood cells on blood film 
and ing bodies are also referred as bite cells or dagmocytes these are precipitated hemoglobin molecules because of the effect of reactive oxygen species on hemoglobin so the precipitated hemoglobin molecules in the peripheral blood smear uh, uh, which are seen referred as ing bodies or bite cells or dagmocytes so these are this is the characteristic feature of uh, glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogen deficiency that we must be looking for so and then we have butler fluorescence spot test butler fluorescent spot test it will detect it will visually detect the amount of nadph plus present in the cytoplasm that means lack of or decreased amount of nadph plus it will decrease a lack of fluorescence so that's one of the use of doing butler fluorescence spot test and then spectrophotometric analysis of g6pd activity can be done that means basically we are directly measuring the activity of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme so these are all the diagnostic tests that we can use to diagnose g6pd deficiency including family history and then any triggering events that you will have to look for and then complete blood count liver enzymes and then the bilirubin estimation haptoglobin estimation and also uh, we are doing butler fluorescence spot test so variety of tests and then uh, hinge bodies bite cells dagmocytes so all this will help in our diagnosis process so that's all about glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme deficiency thank you